Hi folks. Almost a year ago I created this video about how to calculate the apparent motion of Venus as seen from stereo head. I did that to address a misconception that Venus was moving too slowly as seen from stereo head. Now, since then I've noticed that this misconception is actually fairly widespread uh, and applies to observers on Earth who oftentimes expect Venus to be moving with a certain speed relative to the horizon from night to night, that it should be getting either lower or getting higher in the sky each night. And at times it doesn't seem to move very much at all, not enough for the average person to notice. And so they think this is unusual or that it's evidence that it's not really Venus at all, even if their sky programs say that it is, uh, and that it rules it out as being Venus. So in order to address this claim without having to pull up uh, Starry Night or another program that uh, people don't necessarily trust, I've gone ahead and uh, enhanced the accuracy of my calculations uh, to address this claim. And back when I did this almost a year ago, I used very simple methods, basically two-body type methods without any perturbations and using old mean orbital elements uh, with an epoch of 1990. We're now 25 years ahead of that. And although it didn't impact the calculations enough to matter for that video, it does start to matter when Venus starts to approach the observer as it currently is close to Earth. So in order to address this and enhance the accuracy of the calculations, I've implemented uh, more sophisticated methods that generate the mean orbital elements for the current epoch using the equations created by Simon Newcomb and published originally in 1898. Uh, they were republished in books since then, of course, including this one, Astronomical Formulae for Calculators, which was published in 1979. But it uses the exact same equations uh, that were present in Simon Newcomb's book. And here are the, uh, here's the uh, coefficients for the polynomials for uh, Venus to calculate the mean orbital elements at a, at a current epoch. I've also included calculations for the major perturbing factors. It's not exhaustive, but it's enough to get within a few arc seconds of the correct value, which is much higher resolution than anything you can see by eye. So here's the spreadsheet. And I've set it for a particular date and time here because I have a photo of Venus at that date and time. And you can see the output for Venus is down here. It shows you the uh, right ascension and declination at the equinox of date, as well as J2000, and then the altitude and azimuth. So if I go to the photo, we can verify that this spreadsheet is working properly. Here's a picture of Venus. Jupiter was way up here back, in, uh, back at the end of May. And this is Venus down here. Now we can confirm that this is Venus by astrometrically solving the image and uh, looking at the coordinates. So here is where Venus is predicted to be by the spreadsheet. 7 hours, 46 minutes, 50 seconds, 23 degrees, 52 minutes, 33.49 seconds. And that's in J2000 as seen here in the spreadsheet. So it works perfectly. Uh, and the altitude of Venus at that hour, at that date, was about 21.6 degrees. If we go to the previous day, that hasn't hardly changed at all. The day before that, it's still about the same. The day before that, it's still about the same. You get the picture. If I go a week before that, it's still about the same. It hasn't hardly moved. If we go to the beginning of June, and we go a week forward into that, it's still about 21.5 degrees high it appears to be remaining stationary in terms of altitude over the horizon at a given hour. And that confuses a lot of people, but that's exactly what we expect. And the reason for that, it's uh, really quite simple. So here's Celestia. Here is uh, the position of the planets in the solar system at the end of May. The sun's here, Venus is here, Earth is here. As we go forward, Venus is moving towards Earth but from Earth's perspective, it's not making uh, much lateral motion in this time frame. It's mostly coming straight at Earth in its orbit. It's closing the distance, and as a result, you won't notice it moving much in terms of altitude over the horizon as it reaches maximum elongation from the Sun. And that's exactly what these calculations show. So the math can all be found there in the book Astronomical Formulae for Calculators. Uh, and uh, here's the spreadsheet. I will put this as a link in the video description, and you guys can check it out and use it next time you have a question about where Venus should be in the sky. 
thank you very much for watching. clear skies, folks.